for now, we want to jump into our discussion for today right here on Viewpoint. And as I did mention, we want to talk about the status of the logistics industry here in Kenya. Now, conversations around the SGR have been the talk um, here in Kenya for about a week, if not more, um, with stories developing daily. And this all started over the failure of the Kenya Ports Authority to allow trucks to collect cargo um, and uh, all of of course all these freighters and haulers were ordered then to move their cargo by train and so that's forming the basis of our discussion today um, with the focus on this stalemate between the SGR and truck owners and how to you know address this issue and fix the industry now Ron lorry systems uh, your head of transportation so yes. T as you tell us about what you what you guys do at Lorry Systems, I imagine that you're not very happy <laughs> 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 with this current situation. Um, okay, so Joyce, Lorry is a Pan-African e-logistics company that streamlines cargo owners and transporters. It creates a platform whereby we can come together and move cargo more efficient. Mm -hmm. So we're just bringing in efficiency into the market mm -hmm. and... Um, making the logistics space move at a higher mandate than what it was doing yesterday. Mm -hmm. So in regards to your question on what the SGR has to do with uh, transportation of cargo, I would say we're in the disruption age, not just for logistics, but for any other industry, for yeah. communications, for banking. It's, it's business unusual, and it's because we, the consumers, want things better, bigger, faster, and want them now. Right. So interest rates have been capped at 14%. Um, taxi hailing apps have been regulated before you could take a cab from the airport to the CBD and maybe what 2,000 shillings and you can do that at as long as 800 to 500 shillings depending on the time. Yeah. So it's the same thing in logistics. So we have sort of been cultured to understand that the origin of all cargo must be in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. Origin of cargo can be even right here where we are right now. Okay. So I think it's just pretty much a phase of disruption that the industry is going through. And I'm sure that um, the transporters, <coughs> the government, the cargo owners, lorry systems is ready and willing to work with all stakeholders mm -hmm. in regards to moving cargo in a more effective manner. Okay. Yeah. But then you, you also do have to ask the question though, is it fair to demand that people have to move their cargo through SGR? Isn't that sort of creating, monopolizing yeah. the transportation industry in a way and considering that there have been businesses running all through that have built their fortunes built their careers fed you know loved ones through these alternate um systems so okay i would say first of all i'm sure there's a couple of roundtable discussions that went through before the sgr came up and then of course we have the whole um chinese loan that we are using right now to pretty much uh take care of the rail and for government to decide that they want to move the cargo from Mombasa to Nairobi, essentially, I'm keen to understand that efficiency is what they're looking for. However, with efficiency comes a lot of bottlenecks as well, if you don't think through the process all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. So on paper, it's an amazing concept. Execution probably would take a bit more time yeah. for us to get it right. Okay. Now, um, transport partners are aggrieved, rightly so, to fill the pinch that, you know what, you've taken my revenue from Mombasa, you've moved it to Nairobi, there's a whole study, a report that's been done by the University of Nairobi um, in partnership with the county government of Mombasa. And the government, I think, rolled out that uh, report about a month ago, just stating how much revenue in terms of losses the county of Mombasa has gone through mm. and how much the transporters have been affected by the same. So even as it happens now, yes, there's, of course, um, the position of the government that the cargo needs to be railed to Nairobi. But I'm certain there's still a lot more discussions around this topic okay. to decide, do we go 50-50? Do we take it back to Mombasa? By the end of the day, I'm sure an amicable solution that is good for the economy will take will, will come into play. Okay. Yeah. Kaberi, is yours hopeful for that amicable solution? And more so, um, do you agree that this is about efficiency and would bring a, has the potential to bring about greater efficiency? Well, I think uh, it's... Um, a multi sector decision which need to be made because there are various stakeholders who are being involved from the Kenya Transport Association. We also have the government and they also the truck owners and all that. So I want to believe that it's something which they need to bring in all the stakeholders because in my opinion, I don't see the reason why the government should try to create a monopoly or even to try to force a system in that people have to transport through the SGR. There are so many other things which they are not telling us the truth. 
when they talk about even the cost saying that they are trying to reduce the cost, you'll be surprised that it's even more expensive to transport the cargo through the SGR because it costs around roughly 100,000 from mm -hmm. Mombasa to Inland Container Depot in Nairobi as opposed to the trucks which use around maybe 8,000. Mm -hmm. But on the other side, they also arguing on the road maintenance because there's a claim that there are so many trucks, like for oil only, an average per day we have around 700 trucks moving around along that road. So they're talking of the road, there's a lot of destruction and all that. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a concern for each and every party. And this will be only be solved if everyone is brought on a round table to try to see what's the amicable solution for that. Right. Yeah. Moving away from the SGR discussion for just a little bit, you know, when we think about logistics in, in the entire logistics industry, it is so highly dependent on infrastructure. As you're saying, yeah. you know, the roads down yeah. at the coast are forever <laughs> having to be redone just because of that immense pressure and wear and tear that they go through. But um, even in other parts of the country, infrastructure, so, so important, yet we seem to have been very slow with sort of getting that on board. And it affects everything from how farmers get their produce, you know, to the market and then be able to sell at a good price. <coughs> um, so, you know, in your experience, you know, heading transportation for this firm, are you happy with the pace at which development is addressing infrastructure concerns here in Kenya? What are some of the things that you would like to see? I would say, as Kenya, we are moving at a pace that's uh, better than most, slower than some, because if you look at the African continent, essentially the infrastructure is not, is not really top-notch. So just to put it into perspective, um, the cost of moving goods within East Africa is about 70, 75% of the cost of a commodity that you actually purchase as a consumer wow. is goes into logistics. That's if you, terribly high. Yes, extremely high. What's if you compare the, that with the... Practice? If you look at the United States, for example, the cost is at 6%. Six percent. What? So 6% is 75 So when you're buying the commodity, 70% is moving it from farm to factory, factory to distributor, distributor to retailer, retailer to Joyce. Yeah. That's it. That's where the entire markup of the system comes through. So how do we fix that? Um, a couple of things I would say. One is what we're doing as Lori is, of course, employing data and technology to actually understand how efficient can we get this done. And let me just use Kipchoge as example since we're having that kind of a week. Sure. So uh, we are centered around three pillars, people, process, and technology, which is a core three pillars that affect logistics. Now, tech is amazing, but you need the people and you need the process. So, for example, while Kipchoge is running his race, the car at the front is a tech. Mm -hmm. It's setting the speed and the markings on the road. Mm -hmm. Like he had to run within a certain grid and follow a certain line mm -hmm. to hit the 159. Because if you take a wider curve, mm -hmm. if you take an inner curve, there's, there's a couple of timings that go off. Mm -hmm. Now, the people are the pace setters. So as much as that you have the car, you've got, you need the people to come in and actually do the operational part of it. Switch the, um, switch the teams, give him the proper set of mind, pretty much encourage him as he goes through his race. And then lastly is the process. Mm -hmm. The process is why Vienna is a flat, a flat course all around, um, why the time of day, why the weather, all those things. Yeah. So if you look at um, a lot of the cargo owners that work with Lori right now have a challenge whereby they're in a space that is not really their core business. If you drive around Nairobi, Joyce, you find that every single manufacturer has a truck. Mm -hmm. So you walk around and you see a supermarket having a truck. Their core business is actually retailing. Mm -hmm. But the reason why they've bought that asset is because logistics is broken. So they've now gone into transportation. Mm -hmm. If you look at all FMCG companies, they put branded trucks on the road. You have East Africa breweries, you have Coca-Cola and everyone else. Sure. So essentially, do you need to have that asset? Is it your core area of business? Not really. All right. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a break now, gentlemen. But of course, I'll be back with uh, both Ron and Kaberia after this short break, continuing to talk about logistics in Kenya. Double two triple nine is the SMS line. And you can also comment on our Facebook page. I'm going to be reading a few of those when we come back shortly. Stay tuned.
right, everybody, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. Unfortunately, I need to get my Facebook logged in, but let me look at some uh, SMSs here. Uh, someone says, hey, Joyce, uh, I'm Joyce also. Oh, hi, namesake. You're watching us from Nakuru, and you say you have two candidates, Mayan Class 8 and uh, Verovian Academy in Carol uh, Form 4, Mamangina High in Rongai. Please wish them success. Well, all the best to your girls there. Um, Joyce, uh, as two candidates, we're here, but uh, I'm sure they're going to do well. Uh, someone else says, hey Joyce, looking awesome as usual. Asante, you always switched for good uh, for full circle with Joyce. And that's Cynthia watching us from Ruaka. Asante Sana for that. Someone else says, hey Joyce, looking great. We really celebrate our champions. Big up to Kaberia. I'm uh, Fiona watching from Antu Betwe. Unam Joyo. Yeah, 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 I know oh, Fiona. Hi, yeah, hi, so Fiona. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> but uh, before we jump back into our discussion, let's take a look at uh, Twitter. And um, here, there's an interesting comment in reply to P.S. Charles Hinga on Twitter. Someone, he had said that the Railway City Master Plan is ready, and this will most certainly change the face of Nairobi. I appreciate your comments before we embark on this impl implementation. And I'm just very curious about that. What do you guys think about um, having a Railway City Master Plan? Is it doable at this point? Well, I think it's, uh, I can see it's somehow ambitious and especially bearing in mind there are other things which government has put as the priority, the, the four agenda, and which you have not even seen the actual realization. Mm. So it's like putting a plan of a plan and now, and what we really want to see is the execution and the implementation of that. Right. Yeah. And of course, we saw on social media, mm. our, our dear governor, uh, Mike Sonko, <laughs> abroad, <laughs> and he was talking about the trams, and it almost sounded like he was going to say, we're also bringing this to, <laughs> <laughs> to Kenya. And I mean, I don't know, Ron, do you, yeah. Is a, a real a city railway um, plan possible at this point? Because as far as I've understood, <laughs> when cities abroad and countries abroad have started or wanted to do such things, you literally have to flatten an entire city. Yeah. Because at this point, you, you know, where are we going to take all of these buildings and people? <laughs> I think on paper, again, where me, Kenyans have a really great conceptualizing. <laughs> like that I'll give us 100%. Mm, yeah. The challenge is the... Uh, is a continuity because yeah. we're trying to build from the outside in. Yeah. So one one regime says education. <laughs> so Moi ended up with that, and we had so many schools. The girl child was empowered, mm -hmm. then stopped. Kibaki said infrastructure stopped. Um, Jubilee came in SGR. Yeah. So the question, Everybody wants their own. Yeah. So the next guy may come in and say, I don't know, betting maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Skyscrapers yeah. and yeah. whatnot. But, you know, um, someone here was responding, Corey uh, BSTD on uh, Twitter, saying that probably one of the things we should look at is building commuter railway routes to densely populated areas in the outskirts of CBD. So Gidurai, Kahawa, Kikuyu, Kibra, Rongai, Dandora, Pipeline, Umoja, and Kitengela. Also suggested, dedicate an express commuter train to JKIA and that commuter bookings and payments should be digitized. Lots to discuss in that statement right there. I don't know, again, if, if we can possibly at this point build those commuter railway routes to those areas that he's mentioned. But certainly, I think given the amount, the number of people that live in those areas and difficulty as far as transportation, that's probably something that should be considered. I, I think what the thing she's... Uh, trying to address is the issue of traffic and especially the congestion on the roads. Sometimes in the early morning along the Karode River and Mombasa Road, the traffic is so crazy that you'll take even one or two hours, a distance should have covered 20 minutes. And one of the things which have been brought even on the various plans by even P.S. Hinga and even Mike Sonko was a way of reducing the traffic by making sure that there's good flow of vehicles and also the big number of people are being transported using the, rail, the railway system. But the whole concern is on the cost. What's even the cost aspect of being attached to this? As much as there's a problem and a solution, then you also need to be so much cognizant that it's a huge, it's a huge investment uh, for yeah. the infrastructure. But then at some point, if you guys remember, our roads were painted with this very nice red yeah, light. BRT, yeah. yeah. BRT, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What happened? <laughs> it's still decoration yeah, on the road. Waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be a possible solution? Um, again, short term, yes. <laughs> 
long term probably we just have to change our lifestyle i mean yeah. it's just looking at does mom dad daughter does everyone need to drive one yeah. secondly is how much time do we spend in traffic mm -hmm. so the brt really good system but maybe we should look at it like with a 10-year vision sure. yeah, like what's what's actually should we cycle into town multiple options but at the same time grow the culture of saving time yeah, yeah. one of the things I, I i know that happens abroad is that they have on that they have a, a lane which they call high occupancy vehicles where you are only allowed to drive on that lane if you're at least either two or three people at least three people in yeah. that car so it's encouraging carpooling mm, yeah. right so that instead of Bibi anatoka na gari yake, bwana anatoka na gari yake, young adult anatoka na gari yake. It's three people now are in one car. Mm. And yeah. so you you get a concession for being allowed to use that route mm. which means less traffic for you um and get to your place faster. And perhaps maybe instead of adding on to the infrastructure, we just need to think a bit more creatively True. as far as how we can provide concessions for people to um you know, motive incentives yeah. for people to actually help reduce the traffic loads here in Kenya. But uh, again, also on logistics, there is a comment there about commuter bookings and payments should be digitized. Now, what anyone do you me? I've still never written in SGR. Why? Because I can never get a ticket. <laughs> the well, system is full. just, it's always full. Or when you go, now you have to find a broker. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, Who you have to call. Yeah. Then you have to pay. You know, and the I, price. Yeah, and yeah. they inflate the price. Mm. So, how much you know when even when you're working around logistics you know is it that it's not possible i mean surely we have mobile money and we've set the standard as far as mobile money payments goes it's just it's difficult to imagine that we cannot get a digitized uh, commuter booking system i think i'd say it is possible to have it digitized um the struggle there's a, of course there's the early adopters the guys like uh joyce and cabrera who go in and log in and say i want to try this thing out there's the late bloomers who would say, why not take a bus? Why not, you know, this is disrupting. Why would I have to do this? So in the short term, there's, of course, those teething problems. But eventually, the rate at which the consumer wants to actually lower the cost of goods, mm -hmm. which is, of course, something else we're doing at Lori, is um, that will take place to us. Eventually, it has to take place because you can keep spending more. <laughs> when you can actually get it uh, cheaper and save time. Right. So the bookings will definitely take off uh, take off at some point. Right. Yeah. Right. And earlier you touched on technology and its impact on the logistics um, industry. Uh, what are some of the things or best practices that you would like to see sort of employed here in Kenya? Um, some of the best practices I'd say is we need to, as a nation, um, especially in the business community, embrace data to make informed decisions. Mm. Because every day we operate in business spaces where uh, from time immemorial we're in that space because we were, it's been handed over from generational wealth or because it seems like it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. the, the basic, the fundamental principle, the fact that we're having this conversation on full circle and switch TV is already disruption as it is. Like this is, media has gone a totally different direction because you're doing using data to find out what does a consumer want, doing your research on that, then using that information to package content like Full Circle with Joyce in the Morning that people want to watch. Mm. So the one thing I'd say is let's make data-informed decisions, mm -hmm. which is uh, the core of what Lori is built under. So, for example, we've managed to lower the cost of transporting food commodities like bulk wheat from Mombasa to Kampala by almost 70%. That's oh, how fast okay. we reduce the cost. But this is all based on, do you need all those trucks at the same time? Can you do have trucks moving on a loop? Higher revenues for transporters, faster loading times and offloading for cargo owners. Mm -hmm. So data to make informed decisions is some of the things I'd like us to see this nation go through. Okay, yeah. Kabera, your final thoughts on uh, the logistics industry and what you would like to see <coughs> as far as efficiency and greater profits. Well, I think for the logistics sector, it's, uh, there's a lot of disruption and we've seen that uh, because of the coming of technology and innovation in that line. And I think what my thought is that the government should try even to move with the trend and move with the time and not try to impose things so that they, it's something which will favor their system. Like, for example, the SGR. <coughs> 
it's not about the revenue the government is making so that they can be able to pay their own loans. It's how efficient and how convenient is it for both the cargo owners and even the truck owners and generally looking at the both space of the country. Mm -hmm. Because we've seen the government structured or the government uh, business, most of them, they drive on monopoly. They cannot be able to drive, look at even the KQ at the Uchumi, they are not able to drive on the competitive environment. So government is trying to create a space whereby there is very minimal competition, but which shall not work in the long term. Okay. So it's good we move with the trend and we are able to, so we look at the time, the efficiency and the cost. All right. Yeah. Well, Ron, Kaveria, thank you both so much for being here today on Full Circle with Joyce and for your thoughts and insights on this topic. And uh, you guys can continue sending in your feedback to double two triple nine. Any other thoughts you have on this? Um, we shall be reading them as we go along. For now, we're going to take a break as we get ready for hour number two here on Full Circle with Joyce Personal Development Monday coming up next.